What's going on? My name is David Page. I'm a professional guitarist and singer, but today I'm not talking about music. Today I'm talking about my honeymoon trip with my wife Stephanie to Utila, Honduras. Our journey started with a ferry ride from Roatan, where we had gotten married, to Utila. The name of the ship was called the Utila Dream. We were sad because all of our friends and family who had traveled to Honduras for our wedding had just left a few hours earlier. There go our friends. And family. But we were really excited about this new chapter of our trip. When we arrived at the dock in Utila, there were dozens of tuk-tuks waiting to take passengers to their next destinations. Stephanie and I decided that we would prefer to walk, and as we made our way out to the main road in Utila, we noticed it was pretty narrow. We had discovered that aside from the one pickup truck that we saw making deliveries, there were no traditional vehicles on the island of Utila, and the residents got around either on motorbikes or four-wheel ATVs. And again, there were plenty of tuk-tuks, but no cars. We walked along the main road until we found Underwater Vision, which is where we were staying. Tomorrow we'll be practicing some of the skills and everything. It's just here in front, right where the two are. So basically, the, uh, where the two red flags are, the furthest out that we're going. Yeah? Not only were the prices for getting our open water certification really, really great, but our accommodations were actually included in that price. Since our ferry got us to the island a little bit after class had already begun, we were given the class information and a tablet with some videos so that we could go to our room to study and get ourselves all caught up for day two. When we met our classmates, we were thrilled to learn that they came from all over the world. Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, England, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, and Stephanie and I were the only Americans that were staying at Underwater Vision at that time. There were several classes happening at the same time, so there were dozens more students from dozens more countries around the world. Even our instructors were from different places. Anthony is native to Utila. And Cynthia is originally from Canada, but had moved to Utila to live on a boat with her boyfriend. Annetta was our third instructor. She was actually also from the United States. On day two, our first order of business was a fitness test. In order to make sure that everybody was safe being in the water for as long as we would be in the water, we had to do a little bit of an endurance test. We had to get in the water and swim from one dock to another and back. And we had to do it two times. Once we were done with that, we had to tread water for 15 minutes. Once we had finished our swimming portion of the test, we were instructed to hang out near a ladder and rest for a little bit while we waited for everyone to complete their laps. Once everyone in our class had finished their laps, we started to tread water. It was about five minutes into treading water that I started to feel a burning sensation all down my right side where I had been hanging onto the ladder. What I had discovered is that along the back of the ladder there was some fire coral after finishing the tread test, the instructors helped me out by putting some vinegar from the kitchen on my burn, which did help temper uh, the burn for a couple of hours. Later on that evening, Stephanie and I went to the drugstore across the street and got a little bit of burn cream for the fire coral burn. After we had all passed our endurance test, we learned the basics about our equipment and how to communicate underwater. There's an abbreviated version of sign language that scuba divers from all around the world use. We also learned some of the basic skills that we would need when we were underwater. Like clearing water from our masks, clearing water from our regulators, and equalizing pressure in our sinuses as we descend. We practiced these skills above water where we could use words to communicate, ask any questions if we needed to, and we could do so safely. Then we got in the water. 
I literally waited a okay. very long time. Perfect. Now you can just lean down and you're gonna float. Ooh, perfect. <laughs> At first, we just got into the shallow waters where we could kneel in the sand and the water would still only be a few feet above our heads. As the skills got more challenging, the dives got deeper and longer. Some of the more challenging skills that we had to learn both underwater and while floating up on top of the water were underwater navigation, removing our mask completely and being able to put it back on and being able to clear all of the water out of it, and removing all of our gear and putting it back on, both underwater and on the surface. We did a total of eight dives over the course of five days. Starting up from what our game plan is gonna be from uh, for our very first dive. Remember like I mentioned uh, the very first day? Essentially when it comes to open water diving and the actual course for training, it's implementing a couple of the skills that we've already practiced the uh, day before yesterday. Last day of class, we all took our certification tests, and everyone in our class passed, except for me. I'm not gonna lie, I had to take the written part twice because some of the calculations are pretty difficult and I struggled. Luckily, I had only missed a passing score by one question, and so they let me retake it, and on my second time taking the class, I did pass. That evening, there was a big graduation celebration for all of the classes that had finished up that day especially focusing on the class of brand new dive masters. We had a great time and partied with our new friends one more time. The next morning, we woke up early, got breakfast, and caught a tuk-tuk to the airport. When we asked the driver to take us to the airport, it was kind of funny because he chuckled to himself and muttered aeropuerto under his breath. We didn't really understand why that was funny until we arrived at Utila Airport. This is the airport. Apparently we chartered a plane. <laughs> now let me preface this to say that I was the one that pushed us to get to the airport early. I know that Utila is not necessarily a super busy airport. However, there's security, there's checking the bags, there's all of these different pieces that are moving and you need to make sure that you're at the airport on time, especially with a place where maybe there aren't as many flights going out because the last thing I wanted to have happen is for us to miss our flight. We got to the airport about an hour and a half before our flight was supposed to start boarding. The only building that we could see had some of the windows boarded up and there was no security, no other passengers. In fact, there was no signs of this being a functional airport at all. The tuk-tuk driver drove away as we stood in disbelief. 
we had double checked, even triple checked every document that we had about our flights. And from what we could tell, this was the right place. So we decided to wait around a few minutes and just see how the situation developed. After all, there was a small propeller plane and a slightly larger plane with a tarp covering it parked near the runway. Perhaps one of these would be the flight that would take us to the mainland. Then we saw something come over the mountains. And no, it wasn't a plane. There was a dark wall of rain. I had never seen rain move like this. And we decided that all we could do was step under the overhang of this rickety building and hope it was enough to keep us dry. This was not a light rain. This was not a drizzle. This was hard rain. We felt trapped under the overhang of this shed. Looking inside, it appeared as though atom bombs had been tested nearby. This building didn't look like it had been entered in decades. The appearance of this building was definitely disheartening, and we were starting to worry about whether or not we would be able to make it to the main road to flag another tuk-tuk without getting us and our stuff soaked. Just then, a motorbike approached, and a woman hopped off the back. She came under the overhang and started straightening out the picnic table where we had been sitting before she arrived. She took off her poncho, opened her backpack, and removed a small scale, notebook, and a few pens. Then she asked us for our names. <laughs> this woman who had arrived was the gate agent, security, and baggage checker, all in one person. We finally had confirmation that we were in the right spot and we started to feel a little bit better. Shortly after, a bus filled with American tourists rolled up and their Honduran handler came out, communicated with the gate agent, and started getting all of them checked in as well. Just a few minutes before our flight was supposed to start boarding, a plane touched down on the runway. This ending to our trip was really quite funny. We walked to the plane and loaded all of our luggage onto the plane ourselves, and as we prepared to take off, there were even a few dogs sitting next to the runway, ready for the show. This is a trip that we will never forget. We made lifelong friends and developed a skill that we will use forever. We loved Utila, and we look forward to returning whenever that may be. See you in the next video. It's